Hi everyone, Chris Natsky here with Black Belt Leadership Speaking and Coaching with your Mind of a Champion Tip of the Week, live on Facebook. So last week, um, I began my discussion about a very, very important topic, I believe in my mind, and that is character and leadership. Uh, this is particularly, I think, really, really key for all of us as we last week uh, elected our new leaders for the, uh, in our election. Uh, but it's not only for the people that we are electing to leadership positions. Importantly, it's about how we're showing leadership in our own lives. And if we want to see change, if we want to see an up level in leadership, we're the ones, I believe, that need to make those changes. It starts with us. And I had shared last week that I was incredibly inspired last year by a quote by retired Admiral James Stravitis, who said this. He said, leadership is a large door that swings on the small hinge of character. Let me say that again. Leadership is a large door that swings on the small hinge of character. So it got me thinking, what are different ways that I could be a better leader and how could I show character in my life in order to leave uh, to lead people in a much stronger in a much stronger way. And so what I did last week is I created an acronym, character. It's nine letters. And it was so many letters, I decided it probably wasn't best to share them in one. So I've actually broken it into two. So you can check out last week's um, uh, rendition, but this week we're going to focus on the on the final four. But last week, just as a review, what we did is in, in using uh, character as an acronym, um, C stood for commitment to serve. So great leaders have a real strong commitment commitment to serve those that they lead and those in their community. Uh, then the H stood for honoring your word. And so it's such an important concept, I believe, in leadership. But it's not just keeping your word, but honoring your word means if you do mess up, you make amends for it. You take action to make sure that you're, you're able to make up for those errors that you might have made. Uh, a stands for attainment, and the distinction here was is that it's not just about accomplishing a goal, uh, goal, but it's about helping people and leading them not only to accomplish a goal, but also importantly who they're becoming on the way to that accomplishment, and that's what they're attaining. Uh, R stood for rising to the occasion. You know, sometimes in leadership we do things that are not too popular, but we but it's because it's the right thing. And then finally that. Uh, um, that latter, that first day was about admitting your mistakes and doing something about it. So that was the first five. So so this week I'm going to complete, and if I may, I'm just going to see if I can just take this off and, and share with you the, uh, the next four on my list here. And the second C stands for what I'll call capability. And what, what it means from a leadership standpoint is what I call holding people capable. You know, in the leadership world, in the coaching world, we talk a lot about holding others accountable and holding ourselves accountable. And that's a great concept. But I like to nuance it a little bit. Uh, my friend Kellyanne Zielinski introduced me to this concept. And that is that we hold people capable, which is what we do is we see the best in them. We communicate that to them. We help them understand it. And then we help hold them capable to that level, to that standard. So now it becomes something positive. It becomes something that they can aspire to. And so where do you have an opportunity in your leadership to hold people capable? Hold people capable. Number uh, next is E, and that stands for envisioning the best in others. I'm sorry, is, 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 the, is the T, excuse me, is the T. And that's to treat others with kindness and respect. You know, I don't know about you, but I've definitely been in the presence of leaders who um, are very, very kind, they're respectful people, and those for me are the ones that people tend to gravitate to. I've also been in the presence of people that don't use their leadership positions as a means of being respectful toward others. I mean, I'm very honored. I have two incredible men that I call my martial arts instructors, and the first is Bill Superfo Wallace, who was the first world middleweight kickboxing champion, and it's been you know, four and a half decades since he last fought, but he's still a celebrity worldwide. And, and I've had the opportunity to teach countless seminars with him as his assistant. And I've always noticed something about him. Whether it was a brand new white belt or was a seasoned grandmaster, or whoever, anyone in between, he always took the time to connect with people. You know, give them a good natured ribbing, he'd talk to them, he'd connect with them. And I could see people leaving those encounters just feeling amazing. And so what he was able to do is even though he didn't need to, he was able to connect with people, and he treated them, regardless of who they were, with kindness and respect. So where do you have an opportunity to do that in your position as a leader? The next is E, uh, and that's to envision the best in others. You know, I think that so many times in our positions as leaders, 
we have this incredible responsibility and opportunity to really set the tone for what people actually start to believe in themselves, particularly when they're younger and we're able to mold them. I know I've been able to do this as a martial arts instructor, been honored to do that, and, and it's because it was done for me. And that was my, my first martial arts instructor and is still my instructor to this day, Grandmaster J.K. Lee. And I, I started with him when he first moved from Korea to the United States back in 1976. And I remember one of my first encounters with him and he looked me directly in the, in the eyes and he said, I will make you a champion. Now, as soon as he said it, it was true in my mind because it was someone who I admired and I respected. And I thought, and, and it really just, it changed the trajectory of my life at that time because I began to see myself differently. So when we have the ability to do that, think of the power where we have the ability to help envision greatness in others and communicate that. And then my final point is respect others. Now, I know I kind of said that before about treating others with, uh, uh, with kindness and respect, but it's so important, I'm going to say it a second time, and I'm going to give a little nuance to it as well. See, as leaders, it's very difficult, or very easy, excuse me, for us to sometimes just brush people off or demand things of people. But the best leaders that I've seen are the ones that slow down and they respect people. They respect them in conversation. When they're speaking with them, they act like they're the only person in the room. They're respectful of their time. They're respectful of what they're asking them to do. They're respectful of the challenges that they're going through in their life. Because when you can establish that with someone, when you can establish that connection and they really read and they understand how much that you're respecting their point of view, they will move mountains for you. So there you have it, my friends. There's the acronym, character. All the nine aspects of what I think are important, the characteristics of, of a great leader. And now I have a challenge for you. So uh, it's called the, uh, the Nine Day a leadership character challenge. I wanted to do seven days, but character has, has nine letters. But it goes something like this. Over the course of the next nine days, what I'm going to challenge you to do, and I'm challenging myself, is to take one of these attributes, one of these attributes that are listed right here, and have it be your focus of the day. So for instance, the first day would be your commitment to serve. And every time you go to a situation, you're on a phone call, you're on a Zoom call, you walk into a room, you have a commitment to serve. And on day two, it's H. It's how can you best go in and honor your word, et cetera, et cetera. And one real fun thing you can do, and it's a little bit different now in our time of COVID, but if you're out and about and, and um, you're in an office space or you go into a coffee shop or whatever, every time you move through a doorway, because we are talking about you know, character being this, this uh, or leadership being this large door, every time you go into, through a doorway, think about one of these concepts. So you walk into the doorway of a, of a meeting room and, and you're talking about how you can serve. It's like, man, what is my commitment to serve today? How can I show up? So you see how we're, how we're doing that? So I challenge all of you to do that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it myself. And what I would ask you to do is, is go ahead and, and type in when you have some experiences and share these experiences with you. Because the way that we become leaders in our own lives is, is we practice it. And we don't just practice it you know, when, when times are tough. We practice it daily. Because as we know, leadership is a large door that swings on the small hinge of character. So there you have it, my friends. This has been Chris Natsky with Black Belt Leadership Speaking and Coaching. And I look forward to seeing you next time on the Mind of a Champion Tip of the Week.